All right, so welcome back. We're out in the sound. It's October 11th, and I am much further east. I'm in the eastern sound, so yeah, I took the drive. Couldn't wait, you know. Took off from work. This is a Wednesday, and I just want to, you know, fish for blackfish. Blackfish is open now for the Long Island Sound area, you know, New York, New York waters. So this is a new area. I'm very excited though. Seen and heard a lot of good things about this area. This wind has really been tough to fish lately. And I was looking back at my old videos. Same thing happened last year. I didn't fish much in September. So it just seems to be a recurring thing. September is just tough. Seeing a lot of birds here. Chance that we can find pelagic stuff. But I do think those are actually more in the Western Sound now. The, the false albacore are actually in the Western Sound right now. But who knows, there might be some out here too. The name of the game today is blackfish. We are dropping crabs. I got my dry suit on, we're dropping crabs. It's blackfish go time. We gotta be careful though, this area, we're much more exposed out here. I checked the weather, we should be good. The wind might pick up from the south around noon and we're pretty exposed here. So we're not gonna fish too long. I'm gonna fish this for maybe three or four hours. Sunrise to like 11 a.m. is my plan. And then if I have time, I might actually try another new location more in the Western Sound. So let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Very exciting. Very excited to be out here. In a socket, out of socket, just like that. Thirty-eight feet. Drag goes very loose. These guys are these guys are circling the area. So watch I'll just say. Tap tap tap. Oh man. This is so much fun. Tighten the drag a tiny bit. We're gonna try whole crab here. We'll leave the shell on. Come on, you want it. <sighs> nope, too early. <sighs> I got him. Hopefully some bigger ones start coming through. These are all females. I'm pretty sure they will. They're hitting it as soon as it gets even close to the bottom. That's a decent one. Could be a sea bass. Yeah, it's a sea bass. Nope. He's about 15, 
15 and a half. Seem to get rid of these small ones. I think it's just a matter of time. I think we just got to keep plugging away here. This is a very good spot in the sense that there's a lot of rocks around. So it may take them some time to like notice what's going on, you know? I'm trying to call all the, the, the blackfish in the area. And just the more you get fish biting, fighting, pecking, the more interested the uh, other ones come. That was almost like a guess. My jig is so light that I can hardly even feel them picking it up. I think that's another small sea bass. It's, it's probably another 15 and a half. Some nice fish out here though. Just watch how quick, look at it, it's already going. Look at that. I almost don't even have time. I'm not gonna keep porgies today. I'm not gonna keep them. Maybe. Maybe back in the Western Sound. Let's try to only get sea bass and blackfish. And we'll figure out how long to stay here, but. Oof, somebody hit it on the fall on that one. Oh, look at the size of that porgy. Wow. That's a monster porky. That's a nice scup. This is so many small fish. So when I when I get too many knuckles on the hook like this. I actually learned to take them off. Um, and I have some underwater video showing why. But you really want as much of that new crab on there. And the problem is sometimes the fish just peck at everything. So when you have like all these little pieces on the hook, they're just pecking at that and you're know, giving you those false hits. So it's better just to have your prime offering like right where you want it. I'm waiting and waiting. Oh, might be a blackfish. Yeah. Some small ones so far. Sharp hits are usually blackfish. It's all females though, so far. So I just take the crab, take off its claws first, take off its legs, and then I'm using half half crab, so well, you know that's a, that's enough piece right there. Watch. I'm staying up off the bottom too much. All the little pecking fish are getting it. There, I'm on the bottom. See, look at that. Bump, 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 bump. See? I have to. I have to go. 
Let me just try something. I'll try the rig for a second. See there. Gonna use the rig with the shell on half a crab. I'll, ex I'll explain my reasoning in a second here, but I kind of want my offering to stay low. The small fish are pulling at the jig so much that it's like coming up off into the current, and then the, you know the black fish just don't even get a chance. Oh, look at that. Those are porgies though, I think. Rapid. I'm just gonna keep waiting. There. Oh, see? That was a bigger fish. That was a bigger fish. That was definitely a bigger fish. Dang, it came off. See, I waited a long time with that one. There's, there's bigger ones around there. They're down there. They're just playing it smart. And there's just so many small fish that they're just not even getting a chance. But let's try that again. We're just gonna wait, 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 wait until we feel like you saw that the rod like went in the water. That's what we want. It is very hard to wait. Sometimes you just have to do it because they're just like already hooked. See, but like they already had it in their mouth. You can't. If you don't sit on that, then you'll lose your bait. I definitely don't don't like a level a level lever drag with a. I might move shower. That might be the play. Yeah, you know, maybe get into like 30 feet instead of 40. Ooh, look at that tap. Wow, wow. That's a blackfish shaking his head like this. Twist like boom, boom, boom. You really want the rod just to go down. You want weight. You want something pulling, not just tapping. Like that, almost. He's, he's got it and he's, he's moving away a little bit. It's just tiny fish. It's just a tiny fish. All right, I think I'm gonna change spots. Cause I'm just getting small fish. What I did is basically just move a little shallower into the boulder patch. I mean, this is a massive boulder patch, so I don't think you have to be on any specific piece out here. But with the way the current's moving now, I tried to get deeper in so that <clears throat> my crab guts and stuff go out into the bigger area of the boulder patch and kind of draw them in. So, might, might have to start the bite again. That should be worth it. We 
Let's see if we can hold with the jig. I'm probably gonna have to up the jig. We need some more weight. May not even use the jig for now. All right, All right let's see. I'm gonna rig with a five ounce weight. More than 30 feet. Current's pretty serious. Dang, getting bites immediately. It's just so crazy. Like, we moved spots. It didn't even have to... Wow. Didn't have to build the bite. Phew, look at that. That's a decent one. getting there and there we go it's a male too which is a good sign Oof. so strong I got the little yellow here love that two dots I'm not a fan of the legs because it just gives them like leverage in my opinion There we go. That's a good fish. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Oh man. Oh yeah. That is a nice one. Big girl. Dang. <laughs> All right, so, you know, we're allowed to keep three at 16. You know, beginning of the season, I'll keep them. I'll try to get my limit as the season goes. You know, I'll probably not keep as many. So she is almost 18 almost 18 oh, that's a keeper so I'll bleed her out and string her up Oof. that is a chunky fish you can see that rubbery rubbery lip it's you know it's pretty solid you don't you don't lose many if you hook them good This rod actually is pretty nice. It's not, it's not, honestly, it's not so overpowering. Like, that was a fun fight. I was able to take a little drag. I just had a feeling that my little spinning rods would not be able to cut it today. And I was right. <laughs> We're past, like, slack tide, and the tide really never slowed down. I don't know. Ooh, that's a sharp hit. That was sharp. We want. I don't think the color of the crab makes any difference, honestly. I think tide tide makes the most difference. You know, jig versus rig, I think it can. It can make a difference, the jig versus rig. Today they're definitely biting both, but I can't hold bottom with the jig. Like I have a five ounce weight here and I'm almost scoping in 30 feet of water. 
So that's a ripping, ripping current. I'm getting very tempted to send the underwater camera down there, but oh, current's almost too great. He's a little short. Yeah, 15 and a half. Look at that yellow, it's so awesome. I love these fish, I love them. It's scoping pretty hard. Scoping pretty hard with a five ounce. Oh man. I got these fish under the boat though. This feels like party boat fishing almost. <laughs> With the conventional and the current. These are, these are decent fish. Like They're just a subtle bite now with the current, I think, but. I might even try to go with a eight. Oh, sharp. That was a sharp tap. I should have went. There we go. That was another male. So we're going to get rid of this. We don't want that knuckle stuff. swam up with it. Look at that slob porgy. Freaking slob porgies out here. Yeah, I, got, I have to move my weight up. Alright, so we're switching out the weight to an 8. And we don't want to stop fishing for too long because now with there being a couple boats around me, uh, I don't want the fish to get Second idea is about moving. That's right now I have them under my boat. But if you wait too long, they will move around and go to someone else's boat. So we gotta keep fishing. These fish have no like beginning taps. They just go all out. Much more aggressive here. I feel like even though they're aggressive though, they're smart because the water's clear. They're smart with their bites. All right, we'll put the underwater down because I haven't done it. I should have done it at the last spot, but this will probably be the same. Okay guys, so I didn't do too much underwater, especially at this first spot because the current was just ripping so hard. But as you can see, these boulders are very tightly packed and that is what to me, I think makes a really good blackfish spot. But this spot was known, as you saw, there's a lot of boats there. So I think that's one of the reasons why you know, there weren't too many keepers. So I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to stay out here. I can feel that wind hick kicking up. I might have to go to the next location. They're just chewing on it. All right, let's try that. It's funny, those guys are pretty much where I started. Pretty much. I'm using this, the trolling motor. Looks like they're gonna change spots.
give it a little more time. I mean, I'm getting good bites. I just don't really enjoy fishing in this kind of current. It's just crazy. Like with eight ounces, I'm scoping. The current now is almost dangerous, in my opinion. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call it. It's just too dangerous. So this is what we do. We just, just let it go. pick it up so somehow I lost my anchor because the bottle I guess the current's moving so fast that my bottle is not even uh, at the surface it's getting like pulled under so I can't find it it's so crazy let's get a bubbly let's eat something put the fish away What we'll do is we'll try to fish this more sheltered area. Hopefully there's less current. I think there will be. And we're just gonna have to try to stabilize with our feet over this piece, no anchor. And then right now I'll get off the water probably in like an hour. So wind's supposed to pick up out of the south anyway. I don't wanna, this land is not very big, so it won't block too much wind. So I'm gonna try and do the jig crab again. Twenty-five feet. Right, that's the bottom. Once we once we find some good rocks, I'll mark it. We'll just try to hold that spot. Definitely some good rocks here. Found a nice one. Oof. Wow. Oh, I had the drag so tight. Oh, man, freaking bruiser. Oh. Dude, that's a blackfish, man. That is a blackfish. Wow. <sighs> what a what a nice one. That's a nice male. Whew. Choke the jig. Let's see. Let's see how big he is. I'm gonna guess he's like also 18 or 19. Eight, yeah, almost 19. Mouth closed, he's like 18 and a half, almost 19. Ow! That's our second keeper. That's a nice one. Get him on the stringer. All right, let me try to get back up on that piece. I can't believe it. it's like the first, first little drift over it. This is a three quarter, three quarter ounce, you know, like purple colored bottom sweeper style jig. I got 40 pound leader, 15 pound braid, and that's a Pen Clash 3000 and a St. Croix Triumph. Seven foot last die cut. There's a lot of good rocks here. Just do the same thing. That was a small whole green with all this stuff cut off. All right, let's throw it back down. Oh. 
Man, if I had, if I had my anchor here, it would just be game over. These boulders are tall. Oh. Took it on the way down. Some really nice boulders. Sea bass. All right, so we're still just doing this, but it's just so hard. I'm just not very good at black fishing without an anchor. I really, really, really like my anchor. Oh. <laughs> That was a big one. Oh, dude. He's not even moving. Unless I foul them. This is a big fish, unless I fouled it. Oh, my gosh. I think I fouled it. So weird. It's gotta be found. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Oh, oh my, look at this pig. He's a pig. It came out. I think I'm gonna let this guy go. Oh man, just so I don't hit my limit yet and I can just keep fishing. It's about 18 and a half. I mean, it's about 19. You know what? I'm gonna keep them. And I'll just let everything else go. Why not? I really came out to catch three keepers and even though it's kind of like it didn't count, <laughs> um, you know, I got him in the boat and he counts. If it was a female, maybe I'd let it go. And try to get another male, but this is perfect. Two nice males, which tells me, oh, there's definitely more. Usually there's more females than males. Oh my. They're just picking it up. Let's throw the underwater. All right, so the little bit of underwater that I was able to do at this location uh, was pretty revealing. What I found is, here you're seeing actually when I started a little bit deeper, how the bottom is a little sandier. Uh, but these rocks are pretty good. It's a small little patch of rocks. Some are pretty big. And I think it was just mostly sea bass though, mostly sea bass and porgies. There weren't a whole lot of blackfish here. But see that that's a blackfish actually inside that fish trap uh, but now that you see me moving shallower this is where I'm like in 25 feet the bottom has changed quite a bit you see how there's there's shells now on the bottom I mean the rocks pretty much look the same but that harder bottom I think is better for blackfish you know those shells and stuff and what's interesting is I find that that's of actually very similar bottom to what's in the Western Sound. You know, the Western Sound areas that I typically fish for blackfish actually look like this. And yeah, you're not seeing too many big blackfish in this underwater, but you know, as you saw, I def did catch some some nice ones, and I think there was a lot more. The, the really the main issue was just I was moving so much. You, you can see even here, and this is not great footage because I'm essentially drifting and I'm trying not I'm trying to keep myself anchored but it's not really working out at all so yeah just kind of find that amazing that you know I was able to still catch those two keepers 
and be moving like this. A good amount of males too at this area. You can see with that yellow streak on the side there, those are males. Uh, always find that the more males you see, the, the better the area usually is. The last two clips, I'm a little bit more stationary. I was just starting to get the hang of kind of keeping myself still, um, but I'm not over the boulders as much anymore, and you'll see, but I think it's even better, and it's more important that you just fish one little zone so the fish start congregating. So you don't have to be you know, exactly on the rocks. You can be to the side of the rocks, but the key is, uh, just you know keep dropping your bait in the same area over and over again and just the fish get more and more curious on the underwater camera the line got stuck in the in the prop these are the joys of trying to get video yeah this little mishap actually sealed the deal on the adventure because what happened is I drifted so far untangling this and then in that I lost uh, the wing nut tooth for the propeller, so I would have had to pedal, you know, into the wind, into the current, probably you know a quarter of a mile. And so after this, I just said it was a sign and called it. All right, guys, so that's it for this area. We'll uh, we'll pack it up, and I still got a little time, so I want to try and make it over to the Western Sound and see how it is over there. Maybe we'll do more of like a sea bass thing. Um, or we'll drop crab over there and see what happens. No anchor, so unless I can, you know, stop at a place and try to figure something out. It looks like we're just going to be anchorless for the rest of the day. So, that and the motor. I can't find the wing nut for the propeller, so it might have fell in, in the water. Whatever. So, I think it was just a sign. We caught the three keepers. And the wind's picking up, definitely picks up more here. You guys are right. It, there's no land, you know, even from south, there's no land to block it. So, or it's thin land. So I'm glad, I'm glad I'm getting in. We might have like, you know, two more hours to fish when we get to the, uh, to the Western Sound. So let's see if we can do that. Now we're in the Western Sound. This is uh, another new region.